I, the, the title of my presentation uh, is a little bit misleading in the uh, material. Uh, I, I initially uh, <coughs> submitted an abstract on general proposal and implications IP uh, of 3D printing in uh, can the intellectual property law, but uh, my paper was specifically on the uh, copyright dimension of 3D printing and with respect to CAD files. So I, uh, couldn't update that. So uh, my, my presentation today uh, uh, is uh, just looking at that one dimension of uh, the intersection between uh, 3D, 3D printing and intellectual property. Now, uh, 3D printing, as uh, some of you might know, is a new technology which is increasingly becoming uh, more popular and accessible. Uh, uh, it is. It tests on many areas of law outside of IP in uh, areas of consumer safety, counterfeiting, criminal activity with respect to the regulation of gun manufacturers. That has been very. Uh, uh, that has been in the in the news uh, sometime. Uh, but uh, as a technology which basically replicates what exists in the world, uh, it has significant. A significant impact in relationship uh, with intellectual property law, and uh, 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 that is uh, where I focus on specifically with respect to the blueprint, the, the, the blueprint for uh, the material or for the output in 3D printing, the uh, uh, CAD file. Now, uh, how does the law interact with the CAD file? Uh, 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 of copyright protected objects. So if you have a sculpture, uh, is a CAD file of the sculpture uh, a copyright protectable? Uh, but, but then we have other items, consumer goods, uh, uh, some of which may be design protected or copyright protected, some of them may not be, uh, depending on their functional utility feature. Now in those circumstances, it's easy to have their CAD file and add some artistic expression to them. And at that point, would CAD file of those items be corporate protectable? Or thirdly, CAD files are also created just simply using a software based on uh, uh, individual's imagination using a software without any reference to what exists in the real world. Even in that case, then, uh, would a copyright subsist over those CAD files? Now, uh, so these, uh, in the three dimensions, my uh, uh, paper deals with the three scenarios by looking at how CAD files can be categorized in this scenario and how the test of originality can be applied with respect to CAD files in the three scenarios depending on how uh, the CAD files are uh, prepared. So uh, as we said, as I said earlier, uh, 3D printing basically starts with the a computer aided design file, the virtual model of the product. Uh, uh, it holds the instructions that uh, when it is sent to the printer, would direct the printer to come up with a number of different uh, uh, articles, of course, in different ways, uh, in, a, a limit, in a limitless uh, scenario, uh, beginning from uh, toys to uh, prosthetics or uh, plain parts or uh, uh, other uh, items, like tributor, uh, etc. Uh, uh, now, uh, why 3D printing has become an issue recently first? Well, 3D printing has existed for ages, but uh, uh, in an industrial setting, but once the uh, patent for those industrial 3D printing has expired, uh, then it was easy to manufacture 3D printing at a consumer's price level. Now, if you go to Staples, you'll find 3D printers at a very affordable price, and the industry is evolving in such a way that uh, individuals can have 3D printers as a home, their garage, uh, to the extent that we have a, a real printer, uh, at some point, uh, we will have a printer at a garage, and we don't have to uh, go to the, to, to the mall to buy toys or any other uh, household item. We can just print them from home. Or even if you don't own 3D printing, you can just upload a CAD file on the uh, website of any of these online platform uh, service providers, which are sophisticated 3D printing technology, and you can get your item printed in whichever shape you want. <coughs> you want. So that makes it easy uh, to uh, uh, use the technology uh, uh, frequently. And 
the materials earlier, uh, uh, when the technology was at early stage, usually uh, you could print items based on just molten plastic, and that was limiting on the number of items you can uh, print. Uh, but now the technology is increasing, and you can use a number of different items uh, to actually have a real utility good, uh, just not uh, uh, artistic and uh, toy kind of items. So, uh, 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 it's because of these factors that 3D printing has become a phenomenon. Uh, uh, now, once you print an item, uh, based on the output of the item you print, it's easy to see where intellectual property will come to the picture. If you duplicated an item with artistic element, obviously copyright will come to the picture. Uh, if uh, what you replicated is a patent protected item, it's clear patent will come to the picture. Uh, the same with trademark. Uh, the question becomes uh, more difficult with respect to card files. You haven't printed the item, so the infringement is not based on what you printed, but based on what you prepared in your computer and maybe which you uh, downloaded uh, or uploaded on the internet, on the card file. Uh, uh, now, you can prepare the card file uh, from uh, based on just a studio scanner material just directly, just like uh, what you see here. Or you can, printer, you can prepare the item based on the software, just using coordinates and diagrams. Uh, or you can just take a picture and use a software and just have a CAD file. These are all three different methods of preparing a CAD file uh, uh, would give rise to different aspects of infringement question uh, with respect to the CAD file. Now, that can easily be copied, modified, distributed, and redistributed. Therefore, the card file dimension of 3D printing is the one that attracts the most attention uh, in intellectual property. Uh, uh, one of the earlier uh, uh, controversies with respect to the card file was, for example, with respect to this uh, the uh, 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 unprintable uh, uh, the, the Penrose triangle. Uh, in this case, uh, a designer created a tangible version of the optical illusion using the 3D printer and uploaded a picture of the final object on the internet. Uh, somebody prepared a CAD file version of that and they uploaded it over the internet and that initial individual who uh, printed uh, the uh, triangle uh, actually uh, sued, uh, sent a cease and desist order uh, on the ground that so that individual doesn't own the Pinterest triangle uh, was in the public domain uh, it was prepared by somebody else but uh, uh, the individual uh, uh, brought an action on the ground that he, can, he has copyright claim over the cat file uh, now eventually uh, that uh, uh, was the takedown request to the website uh, that this was uploaded was decided uh, but the question is still remains whether uh, uh, the cat file of unprotected work uh, would attract copyright att attraction. Uh, there was another incident with respect to the Iron Throne depicted in the Game of Thrones. Uh, it's easy to, uh, uh, for individuals to just print, to use a particular picture and uh, 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 just prepare a CAD file. In this case, uh, a, a user created an Apple doc that mimicked the Iron Throne as depicted in the television uh, game show uh, the, the, uh, on the television show, and the uh, uh, network airing the show issued a cease and desist order on the ground that that infringes their copyright. Uh, the CAD file infringes their copyright. Uh, yeah. Another incident, uh, uh, there is the, the uh, 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 study of uh, Michael Anglos, David in Moses, which uh, was built in the 16th century. An individual prepared a CAD file based on a picture of the statue and the university was going to send a copyright infringement notice uh, for the CAD file. Uh, now, this is a, a statue which has been in the public domain for long. Uh, now, eventually, that uh, was uh, the creator uh, eventually argued with the university officials and they backed off, but that was through legal intervention. Uh, uh, now, so what are the, from copyright perspective, what are the questions? The questions are, does copyright protection extend to, take, uh, to a card file of a copyright protected object? If that statue was a, a current sculpture, uh, now would the card file be an extension of the copyright element over that statue, the sculpture? Does copyright attach a card file derived from a functional or utility object? Uh, uh, if you have a mug, 
that is not completely protectable. You may have industrial design protection or whatever. Uh, now, if you take a cut file of that, is a cut file completely protectable in a different form, in an intangible form? Uh, uh, or if you just prepare uh, based on a software modeling out of your imagination, can you continue to assert copyright? over that file. Now, uh, with respect to Canadian law, I looked, in, I looked into the question based on Canadian law. Uh, and now, when it comes to counterfeits or copyright protected work, there is a jurisprudence whereby uh, a copyright, a, a copying this 3D model would infringe the uh, uh, copyright over the drawing, over the two-dimensional uh, drawing. Even if you have no access to this, even if you haven't copied the drawing, if you copy the uh, uh, 3D model, uh, then that would be an infringement of the uh, two-dimensional drawing. Uh, uh, now, uh, that uh, seems to suggest that, uh, 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 basically, if you have a CAD file uh, and you printed it and somebody copied that, then actually the CAD file uh, copyright, uh, copyright over the CAD file is infringed. Now, the more relevant question from 3D printing perspective is the reverse. Uh, uh, when uh, preparing a CAD file uh, over, uh, from a 3D object translated to automatic attachment of uh, a corporate to a CAD. So, uh, you have uh, uh, this item, let's assume uh, it has some form of, let's assume this is a sculpture, uh, it has corporate protection. Uh, now, if you change the medium, if you change the medium into a card file, would that automatically attract copyright attention? Uh, there is one case, the Tiburge case, in which the Supreme Court of Canada said transferring a work from a poster to a canvas is just a refixation. There is no new, uh, it's not a reproduction, it's a refixation. So basically, in this case, you are changing the format of a corporate protected item, uh, uh, but as an exception for electronic mediums, the court said uh, transformation of an artistic work from two dimensions to three dimensions or vice versa would infringe copyright. Even if the physical reproduction of the original expression of that work has to be mechanically copied. So what that means is, even if the Supreme Court didn't have 3D printing in mind by then in 2004, uh, 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 it seems to suggest that uh, a copyright object, uh, which is scanned or photographed and transformed into a card file, would be considered as unauthorized reproduction. So if the item is corporate protected, uh, uh, it seems that uh, uh, its card file would also automatically be corporate protected. Uh, so that, uh, even if we don't have uh, a jurisprudence, uh, a court case, those uh, jurisprudence seems to suggest that. Uh, but the more <laughs> difficult question would be uh, for card files of articles with no uh, uh, clear corporate protection. Uh, uh, so, card files for those objects with uh, a functional feature. This incident, you remember the uh, uh, dancing shark. Uh, that's a costume, right? Uh, and it's a functional item. Uh, now, it became popular over the internet, and individuals started uh, preparing a card file and sending the card file. Uh, uh, Katie Payne's lawyers asserted copyright uh, over the card file. Uh, now, in this case, uh, the, the question is. At what point has a functional item attracted copyright when it's converted into a card file, or was it because it became popular uh, over the internet, right? Uh, so what we have some uh, legal jurisprudence. If you can severe the functional and non-functional part of this item, then uh, you can assert copyright over those uh, non-functional artistic parts. Uh, 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 but you, you just really. Uh, uh, can't be helpful. This basically is the idea of uh, a sharp dancing. Uh, 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 so in that case as well, uh, you have the doctrine of, uh, in the analysis, you have the doctrine of merger. If you can't dis distinguish between the idea and its expression, if you can't distinguish between the idea of sharp dancing and its expression, which is the case in this case, uh, then there is no corporate over the item. Uh, 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 now, uh, th this existing jurisprudence seem to regulate this aspect of card file uh, uh, as long as 
uh, well, uh, uh, 3D printing technology basically uh, uh, blurs the line between the abstract world and the real world. And as long as the CAD file is in the abstract world, it's an idea, therefore it can be copyright protected. Uh, uh, but the problem with 3D printing is it's easy to give those abstract ideas some artistic expression. It's a matter of adding some colors. Uh, in this case, the creator of this CAD file actually uh, changed it initially in the beginning, uh, changed the sharp, the, the dancing sharp into a drug sharp, right? Uh, and in a different format with easy manipulation. So if this becomes, if it comes to other functional items, even if you can't have corporate protection over the CAD file of a mug, it's easy to add artistic features to the mug and to just print it, right? Uh, so this existing jurisprudence uh, uh, would be difficult uh, to apply when it comes to uh, CAD files. Uh, uh, now, another third dimension would be uh, how about when you prepare a CAD file out of the individual's imagination? Uh, uh, you uh, have something in your mind, you use a software, the coordinates and the 3D modeling coordinates and you created a CAD file. Uh, would that uh, be a corporate protected item? Or you prepare a CAD file of an item which is not corporate protected. Uh, 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 now, if it's corporate protected, this CAD file would automatically be protected. But uh, what if you have a CAD file of an item, an object, uh, whose corporate has expired? Now, because you prepare the CAD file uh, based on a picture of the item or a scanned version of the item, uh, would you have copyright? Would the CAD file constitute a work? Uh, in this third scenario, uh, the CAD file would have to go through those uh, normal uh, copyright analysis, the categorization and uh, originality tests. Uh, now, so you have a CAD file uh, which, uh, 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 is, uh, which is not based on a real world, uh, it's based on an imagination. Uh, you have used a software. You have manipulated uh, aspects of the software to give your CAD file a certain character expression. Uh, now, uh, uh, it is not easy to categorize CAD files into any of those traditional four categories. Uh, but the closest you can get is probably you can categorize you can categorize it as a literary work on the ground that uh, that CAD file has a set of codes. Uh, which, when sent to the printer, would direct the printer to uh, bring a physical output. Uh, so that is the same way uh, 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 computer programs operate. They are a set of instructions or statements expressed, fixed, embodied or stored in a manner that's to be used directly or indirectly to a computer in order to bring about a specific result. So you can create that analogy and you can uh, uh, consider a CAD file uh, uh, as a literary work in a similar fashion to uh, a computer program, but we know uh, the problem, the difficult, the distinction, the functional and uh, expressive uh, 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 distinction and challenge in copyright law, and that would be the case in CAD files as well. Uh, in some cases, the CAD file can be considered as a set of data uh, 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 about uh, including instructions about the functional part of the software to print something functional. Uh, so uh, that is one dimension. Uh, and on the other hand, you can categorize CAD file as an artistic work as well. On the ground that when you look at the CAD file, uh, it, is, it has a visual expression. Uh, it is uh, a visual medium, uh, and irrespective of the quality as long as uh, the work finds expression in a visual medium, uh, then that may qualify as an artistic work. Uh, 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 but then again, uh, that the, the CAD file, the expressive part of the CAD file would be the basis for uh, this categorization. Uh, 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 therefore, we have to analogize it with other works. Otherwise, <laughs> it would simply be uh, considered as a software program. So uh, you can analogize CAD files to photographs. In a sense, they are visual uh, expressions of media, uh, just as photographs are a visual medium of real life situation. Uh, uh, but uh, the, 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 that is one, one aspect. 
Or you can say CAD files are similar to Charles Francis architectural works because they basically uh, uh, provide instructions, coded instructions and directions that the printer software would have, the printer would have to follow, right? So in that sense, it's like uh, architectural work. Uh, in that sense, uh, you can consider uh, a CAD file as an artistic work. Uh, uh, now, even if you categorize it as an artistic work, then you still will have a challenge in the originality part. Uh, the the originality <coughs> part uh, would come into the picture where, especially when you created a CAD file based on an existing object. Uh, uh, now, if you scan an existing object, the question becomes that act of scanning is purely a mechanical process. Uh, a scanner, a 3 printer a scanner basically replicates as much closely as possible, it replicates the item as much closely as what it was. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't see human intervention. It's a purely a functional part of the 3D printer. So the questions become, to what extent uh, has an identified personal author engaged in creating that work? Uh, 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 now, in a picture, uh, the basis, the rationale behind copyright is the photographer has made deliberate choices into lighting, color, and position. Uh, now, when you use a 3D scanner, uh, that doesn't seem to be, there is no much intervention from the scanner, uh, 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 from the individual who opens the scanner. Uh, uh, therefore, the question becomes, once the item is scanned, has there been sufficient modification? Have there been unique choices of features or the creative elements that uh, modify the design itself to make it sufficient and original. If not, if it is an exact replica of a certain item, uh, then its originality will come into uh, the picture. Uh, 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 so uh, the question would be, does the 3D scanner mission provide uh, the author a way to manipulate the expression? Or was the 3D printer mission simply transforming one work from another? That becomes purely uh, mechanical. Uh, when it comes to CAD uh, files uh, from scratch, however, uh, those CAD files that can be prepared based on softwares, uh, 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 in a sense, even if you use softwares, you, um, you operate those softwares to bring about something out of your imagination. Uh, uh, and so the test of originality uh, uh, seems to easily succeed in that respect. Uh, 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 so that is uh, my uh, what my paper is about. If you have questions or feedback or reactions, we'll be happy to talk. Yes. Uh, how has the Meshworks versus Toyota case played out in Canada? I know that's a Tenth Circuit case here. Are you familiar with it? I I um uh, 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 if, if if you can remind yeah, me. Basically, the exact they just process. made wireframes of Toyota cars, and they were trying to. They were exact replicas. Yes. They're trying to claim copyright on the wireframe model. Uh, that, 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 that would be, in, in Canada, that would be an industrial design case. Uh, 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 but I, I don't think it will have much relations with uh, uh, 3D printing part. Well, it, it will have some relations with the uh, earlier case, with the uh, uh, bots case that we saw. Uh, uh, it, it, it may have some similarity, but I'm not really uh, they sure how much cooperation there is. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's really interesting. And uh, as to Meshworks, Edward Lee did a symposium paper mm -hmm. on Meshworks and, and thinking about <coughs> 3D printing. Uh, and he, he's very pro copyright. Mm -hmm. um, but so you can see that. I don't remember. I think Meshworks is in the title of the paper. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also cited in something I'm sending you that I did on copyright 3D printing from the United States perspective okay. uh, that we talked about briefly earlier. Um, and, and you've gone through the same sort of, of identified the same problems or issues that, <coughs> that, that struck me. Uh, one thing I have since known is that with three-dimensional scans, they did a three-dimensional scan of President Obama. Yes. And it was far more complex than I would have ever imagined and so they took multiple multiple scans yes. and they had actually software combining those multiple scans into sort of the best scan 
mm -hmm. uh, which gets to something like originality, although it's being done by software, getting back to our you know, artificial intelligence discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is this kind of analogy to photographs where there's lighting consideration and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sort of quality of scans and which ones you're going to combine. So it just gets tremendously messy for me no. um, to think that a scan <coughs> should be copyrightable. I think the answer, sh sh gut reaction should be no, but uh, I think there's room for disagreement based on mm -hmm. the copyright doctrine. So, uh, I think it's important to separate out the scans from the designing from scratch. Yeah. And you ask about original items, and I think it's, it's uh, or, or, or uh, artistic items, even if they're in the public domain. And in the United States law, there's this long history that if you <coughs> paint something, if you paint a scene from nature, there's still something original mm -hmm. that comes from the author, whether the author wants to or not, even if the author's trying to make it as realistic as possible, no. uh, you know, it's still original. Uh, it, it's it's inextricably, inextricably uh, original. No. Um, but what about also utilitarian objects, right? So thinking about utilitarian objects, if I paint a picture of a utilitarian object, that's copyrightable. Yeah. Uh, but if I create a CAD file from scratch of a utilitarian article, is that more like painting it, or is that more like some utilitarian uh, object? Because if it's if we say that's copyrightable, then we've essentially got copyright protection for utilitarian objects, and that's problematic. That's, you see, that, that, that is where it becomes more uh, messy, because when, when you, uh, if you, if you take a picture of a certain utilitarian item, and you combine with some uh, uh, coloring in that, then still it, it, will be, it will be hard, and eventually it may have some artistic merit, right? Uh, right. But when it is a, a 3D printer, uh, you can just change a color, you can just add some, you just scan a, a mug, uh, which normally is a utilitarian item, but you can just uh, have some coloring and then it becomes an artistic feature, right? So that, that, that is where the, the 3D printing makes it uh, really hard. That distinction, that is, it, it has been just pretty initially in the United States, it was in Canada, it's been a very messy area where to draw the line. And in the United States, the approach is usually if you can't draw the line, if you can't severe the uh, expression part from the utilitarian part, uh, then there is no copyright, right? The United States, of course, are more aligned to finding, you know, not finding copyrights, right? Uh, uh, but it becomes harder and harder with. 3D printing, you can add some features that just go beyond coloring mm -hmm. uh, that would give you some artistic feature. Then when do you draw that line, right? When do you draw this co the costume as a costume is a costume, right? Now, at what point has that become an expression of art? And can you distinguish between that utilitarian part as a party costume and then uh, as an art? That, 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 that becomes difficult, right? Uh, but when it comes to those uh, scanning items, the technology is advancing very fast, and the way the technology is progressing now, even the art of uh, scanning is going to be easy. You can just uh, put your item somewhere to just have that leather flash, and then it's captured, right? Uh, uh, now, then it, it becomes the same question with photograph, like with the uh, if you just simply snapshot, snapshot automatically without any. Now, at what point do you become an artist, a photographer? Or, so that, that has been there in copyright scholarship, uh, but with uh, 3D printing, then uh, uh, the, the, the line would be uh, totally difficult. I, 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 yes, I, I remember the, uh, uh, President Obama's uh, how sophisticated the system has been. But in consumer goods, that's going to be easy. If you want to print a certain toy, uh, you just don't need any sophisticated scanning, you just, uh, or you just take a picture and so that is where it becomes harder, right? Uh, then it becomes purely mechanical, right? Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it's very interesting. Yes, I think one criteria for the determination of originality is that um, if you have different people to produce the CAD file mm -hmm. on the same object, if they get the same file, then probably there's not so much skill or judgment involved, which is implying that um, there, there's no originality. Mm -hmm. But if they make different CAD file on the same object, probably there it's more likely to, to have originality involved. 
so the source of the item, right? Yeah. If they use the same source, then, uh, then the question becomes, to what extent has the second iteration modified the first one, right? So we have a CAD file of uh, this uh, uh, dancing shark. Uh, now you modify it, so that person who prepared that CAD file has copyright over that CAD file, even if Katy Perry's Katy Perry doesn't have copyright. Now, if you modify the CAD file, to what extent has your intervention distinguished your new CAD file from the previous CAD file, right? Uh, so eventually, it boils down to, uh, well, in Canada, we have what you call skills and judgment testing in the United States, the uh, modicum of creativity test, right? So to what extent have you modified from the previous version, right? Uh, that is uh, just the same test with uh, substantiality, music, uh, in other works, right? Uh, but uh, the, the, the question becomes then, when you take a cut file of an existing object, a sculpture, uh, then to what extent has the cut file modified your intervention in the cut file and modified the sculpture, right? Uh, and I think the test should be harder by then because uh, if, 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 if there is no much requirement of originality in that case, and then basically uh, there is no need for the artist to spend that time in bringing a, a real sculpture, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, that would be... Uh, simply because the can find has a copyright protected source doesn't mean there can't be another original, right? Uh, but then it becomes easy to modify it into a copyrightable item even if there is a source, a single source, right? Right. Thank you.